Try pressing a few buttons. Oh, that looks promising. Yay! Yay! Ow! Brilliant. Hi, Al. <laughs> okay. Great to see you. <laughs> oh. Ah, look at this. Gosh, it's been so long. It's all a blur. Oh, it yeah, because uh, when we when we started this uh, stupid project, <laughs> that was, uh, I was still working, and I retired. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now here in London today, it's uh, it's almost 20 degrees Celsius, which is like super hot. It's a, a record to have this kind of um, temperature in February. It's the first time ever that Britain's hit 20 degrees in winter. 20 degrees, mm. in, you know, where you are. Same here. The, uh, uh, just the other day, it got up to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. This wow. is summertime weather. Wow. Just this morning, I cleaned a papaya from my garden. Big, beautiful Hawaiian papaya in February. This is ridiculous. I mean, the, the papaya trees usually don't, should not make it through the winter because of a freeze, or we haven't even had a frost, much less a freeze, yeah? And and yet, we have people in power, people making rules and regulations that don't know the difference between climate and weather. You know, they get a snowstorm up north, a polar vortex, and it's like, ah, you see, there's no global warming. What about the hurricanes? How, have you, has New Orleans been hit again? We've had a couple hit None that bad. I mean, some damaging hurricanes, you know, a lot of a lot of wind and a lot of water and like that, but nothing at the scale of Katrina, not in New Orleans. Now, as you know, there have been many very, very devastating mm. hurricanes since, since Katrina that Houston, Puerto Rico, the islands, Florida, all of these one events start adding up and and it's it's a trend. Mm. Uh, I mean, the, oh, the terrible storm that sat over Houston for a week and just dumped and dumped and dumped rain. So this is this is not not getting better. The Arctic, you know, breaking up. I mean, they have ships now traversing the Arctic in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is just just it's just just crazy that you that you can uh, deny this these things. Happiness is not in the latest gadget, the latest the electric toothbrush or something like that. All of that stuff, it's just not, it's just not the stuff of life. Not for me anymore. Here's to life. Here's to love. Here's to you. How's your family? Doing well. Healthy. And me and me and my new sweetie Consuelo are, mm. you know, getting along famously. Right. Daughter Samantha is doing doing great, and uh, and and now I have a granddaughter oh, since wow. the film. Brilliant. Uh, Penelope Abigail, she is about to be seven years old next wow. month. Wow! Congratulations. Consuelo and I just just uh, finished our annual Kahlua Fest. Uh, <laughs> She is she is in charge of the label. We remember your color. Yes, indeed. That goes so down very nicely. <laughs> yep. How are y'all doing? New families since since we since we saw you. How are yeah, doing? I mean, I can't believe it's been ten years. But yeah, I've got two kids. My eldest is eight, which I still struggle to believe. <laughs> For the last five years, I've been learning to become a screenwriter, writing a TV drama series about, um, about undercover police, a true story of undercover police having relationships with activists, and hopefully that's going to get filmed this year. Oh, dear. Wow, that's a little different. We couldn't keep up this documentary thing when we, not once we got kids, could we? Mm -hmm. Going all around the world, have, hanging out, drinking Kahlua with you in your lens, it doesn't work when you've got somebody. <laughs> it does sound quite appealing. <laughs> it does. But camping on the bayou. We had to reinvent life. And what was it like for you when we rocked up and then kind of wanted to film you? And like, what was the experience like for you? Uh, terrifying, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had never done anything like that before. And, and on so, a personal level, you had pretty severe PTSD, didn't you, after Hurricane Katrina? Your hands were shaking and stuff like that. I went to the doctor. I said, what the hell is going on? You know, I got all of these, these feelings and can't sleep and uh, tremors, et cetera, et cetera. And... Uh, you know, after a little bit, classic PTSD, I'm like, what? 
Are you kidding me? I haven't been to a war. But uh, I did the film, and uh, and that actually helped, you know, talking through all of that stuff, and uh, and did some pills for about six months, and some therapy, and all's good now. Did you ever imagine that like 10 million people or more would see the film? The way I really felt, and I'll paraphrase uh, Ralph Madison, our steady cam guy. He and I were talking about y'all and the film and all of that stuff. And he flat out said, he says, I have no idea where this is going or what it's all about, but those ladies have magic. <laughs> Aww. And luckily it, it, it all worked out, eh? Great <laughs> film. I just watched it again yet last night in, in honor of the 10 year uh, anniversary. I haven't seen it in a long time and I, I probably should watch it regularly. Still, still very timely, still very uh, poignant, especially now with, with, with uh, environmental issues in my country. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it's spot on. <laughs> well and done, girl. <laughs> People would say to us, you could have made the whole film with that one guy, Al, in New Orleans, because oh, you had you had all the different angles within in yourself mm -hmm. that we were trying to get out, which is true, actually. If we'd met you at the beginning, we could have saved ourselves a lot of work. Oh, certainly I'm an ecologist and an environmentalist. I really don't have a problem squaring that working for an oil company that I feel has done a pretty good job in, in being environmentally friendly. People wondered how you felt about how you personally were portrayed. I have no regrets in, in, in doing the film, mm. no regrets. And did you get any criticism from Shell? Not a piece. And I have no idea why. We never heard from them either, did we? We never got Not any. Officially, no. no. And my main house was, it had 10 feet of water and it marinated in that for, in that sludge for, you know, three weeks almost. So the current state of my house, it has been demolished. It's a flat piece of property waiting for another house to go on that. What was the experience of the film like for you in the end in terms of your trauma? Did it help your recovery or make it worse? Uh, uh, having spoken with uh, shrinks and counselors and stuff, I believe, I believe it helped uh, in dragging all of that stuff out of me and putting it on film forced me to, to think through, through the issues. In fact, uh, in my personal opinion, it was way, way more helpful than, than the time I spent with therapists. There's no need for you to pay us, don't worry, for our counselling services. <laughs> we'll give you that for free. So have you built a new house? Yes, I built a new house. This is where I'm sitting here now. What's it like? It is really super energy efficient and was built from the ground up with that in mind. All my appliances were high energy star rated. I had a 500 gallon cistern uh, built out of old growth cypress. So I'm collecting rainwater, which is absolutely divine if you haven't taken a rainwater shower lately. Compost, I'm still composting. I have a huge compost pile. My little green light items, televisions and computers and stuff on energy strips. So when I'm not using them, all, all of that goes off. And all my neighbors are jealous because I have almost no electric bill. <laughs> are, you, are you generating your own energy? Any renewable energy? No, no, I haven't done that. I haven't uh, done any... Uh, solar panels or, or wind or anything okay. yet, and for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, since the storm and the rebuilding of New Orleans, uh, there's been a lot, a lot of talk of, of uh, the energy producers around here rebuilding new uh, sustainable uh, and, uh, energy uh, production, okay? You know, solar, wind, like that. And two, I use so little energy on a monthly basis. It's like three or four hundred kilowatt hours, which translates into about twelve or fifteen bucks. Wow! So to put an array on my roof is a little counterproductive. Right. Now the first reason, uh, the notion that they're going to build, you know, solar farms to supply New Orleans, that looks like it's not going to happen. In fact, the city council just voted just like last week 
for a new proposed gas fire. Hmm. Uh, so, so much hmm. for both. And what do you think of um, your former employers and others now um, trying to exploit new forms of fossil fuel fuels like fracking? Fracking specifically is is a fairly ugly thing, and when you get you know typically you know one or two or even twenty earthquakes in a year, and now all of a sudden you're getting a thousand. You know, it doesn't take a scientist to figure out some, something's going on there, you know. And to say nothing of the amount of energy that it takes to do that and the amount of water that it takes to do mm. that. And then what do you do with the wastewater? I'm starting to invest in water, okay, because if you like war for oil, you're going to love war for water. That is, that is going to be really, really ugly, okay? Yeah. So what about okay. the uh, politics over there? It can't be as bad as over here, right? <laughs> Have you heard of Brexit? Well, not so much Brexit itself, although that's a complete and total disaster, but also because um, in the UK, politics are doing absolutely nothing about climate change mm. because we've got this other shitstorm going on, um, ignoring the even bigger shitstorm of climate change, which is, you know, right becoming right. catastrophic very quickly. If politicians were just ignoring it, that would be a good thing. They mm. are systematically and overtly mm. d d destroying things that were that are, you know, was supposed to be heading in the right direction. But then now, all of a sudden, uh, we have we have our, our fearless leader, I mean, systematically, systematically lopping off all of those those regulations. And, and well, yet, he's a climate uh, denier, of course. You don't know whether or not that would have happened with or without man? You don't know? Well, you're scientists. You're scientists at no, NOAA and NASA. No, we have, we have NASA. scientists that disagree with that. I've got lists and lists and lists of things that they're just, uh, just decimating. There's no shortage of, of gray matter in this species. We can do some amazing things. But I don't think we've been very smart about, about how we use our resources, how we quite literally burn up something as beautiful and useful as oil. Literally burn it up. That's it. It's gone. It's done. You know, getting rid of regulations that, that prevent you from dumping coal ash and waste into streams and lakes. What? Half the population is going along with it and, and cheering at the rallies, you know? So, I don't know. It's pretty ugly. Did you find, out that the birth of your grandchild has um, focused your mind even more on the climate change and, you know, what we're leaving for our children and grandchildren? Absolutely. When I see uh, natural resources like groundwater and all of that being uh, affected uh, before I had a grandchild, I was like, well, you know, I hate it. I love the earth. I'm not sure she loves me. And I hate this. But, uh, you know, I won't be around, I guess, long enough to see it. But now, Penelope will be around long enough to see it. And it, it, it more than bothers me. It hurts me. But, hey, that's what you get when you have governments bought and paid for by private industry. And I don't care who you are, you can't deny that. Right from the early days of the industry, the oil men and their obscene profits have had an unhealthy influence on the people running our country. And now, they are the people running our country. I do feel more, much more terrified, mm. even more terrified than I was then when we were making more age of stupid because of the particular, the particular people, i.e. my two kids, who are going to face... Um, you know, I've always been worried about all the kids who are going to face it. Now I'm imagining those two. Mm. Um, and it's terrifying. And the other thing that I think has changed since we made Age of Stupid is all the climate impacts are happening faster. And it's not something that's going to happen to our children and grandchildren. It's something that's happening now mm. to us. It is, you know, happening in the UK today. Um, and, uh, and without doubt, our children are going to be absolutely in the midst of it. If we go back out to the marsh where we went and filmed Age of Stupid, in just these 10 years, I could show you measurable amounts of land loss. Wow. I spend a lot of my free time volunteering with a coastal restoration group, and there are several. In fact, just Saturday I was, I was down and we bagged up 
uh, 12 tons of oyster shells that we're recycling from restaurants. And um, we move them out into the marsh to create natural reefs and uh, pr protect for erosion. And But it's a natural reef. It's not just dumping a bunch of rocks <laughs> mm -hmm. or in a levee. It's, it, which we're trying to create the, you know, recreate the natural um, systems and ecology and the assemblages. It's a great feeling that I get when I come home all sore and dirty after bagging up tons of oyster shells for a day. So is the erosion happening because of climate change or is it an, a natural process that's happening anyway? Um, climate change is exacerbating the erosion. Climate change and the sea level rise is exacerbating the erosion. It's easy to get depressed, isn't it, Al? But like, what do you take hope from? What do I take hope from? Yes. I know you don't want dead air in this film, <laughs> but that's all I've got. Um, <laughs> right, wow. I mean, really, I, uh, I take hope from the groups that I work with. Very energetic, uh, committed, young people out there trying to do something. I take hope when I go to a science conference. I went last year for, it was three days, and it was hundreds of people, college, college people and professors and, and like that, focused on just that, on climate change and coastal restoration and, and the ecology and pollution. Um, so so I, 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 see, I see the hope there. What do you That's, think of the Green New Deal idea? Uh, I think it's uh, long overdue. Do you get Actually, the feeling yeah. that it might be able to get through? No, no. The, uh, the, the cost that they will present, that the opposition will present, um, will never make it through the voting booth. Although obviously the cost of mitigating um, climate change and trying mm. to adapt to it, if we just let it run wild, is you, you're it's not, all the you're money not in the world. So, so yes, I have hope, and yes, I also am, am very worried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, love the, I, I love the Green New Deal. Every, everything in it, I, I like. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's not going to happen overnight. Maybe, maybe it will, eventually, uh, if we get the right players in the decision-making uh, parts of, of government. When we were talking about making Age of Stupid, we used to say um, if a huge climate impact would wipe out a famous American city, that is what needs to happen in order to wake up the whole world. That's the only thing that would wake up the whole world. Then, of course, Hurricane Katrina comes. New Orleans couldn't be a more famous and iconic American city. Essentially, nothing changed, yeah, nothing changed globally, climate change-wise. And that's not the only example. Yeah, we just went Hurricane through the worst, Sandy. Fire season, the worst fire season out west. Exactly, and that's it's, not enough to wake people up. Yeah, and, and, and forget about wiping out a whole city. How about wiping out a whole island, Puerto Rico? Ice, ice storm. Uh, you know, fresh water dumping into the uh, into the Gulf Stream. You guys could go into an ice age. Yeah, if we're the, not today. If the ice keeps melting, I know. You know, and dumping fresh water into the Gulf Stream. That again, talk to your science scientists about this. But the way I understand the way it works is that slows down that. Yeah, Gulf the Gulf Stream. Stream yeah, mm -hmm, for sure. You guys warm. Yeah, too warm at the moment. In my opinion, our use or misuse of, of resources the last hundred years or so, I'd probably re rename that age, uh, something like the, uh, the age of ignorance, the age of stupid. We wanted to thank you, Al, for coming up with the title of the film, The Age of Stupid, which you spontaneously came up with. And actually, um, a lot of people hated it when we were thinking of using it, but I, I was always 100% for it. Mm. And um, I have a Google alert for it, and um, you, it, it has entered the... Uh, the language a little bit, like people use it as a phrase, not mm. even necessarily talking about our film or talking about climate change, just saying the age of stupid, which is brilliant. Hats off to you for coming up with it. It's lovely. That is lovely. <laughs> we have become an icon. You have. Your phrase has. Um, but of course, I'm sure you know that there's actually an official scientific name now for the age of stupid, the Anthropocene. Anthropocene, yeah. yeah. I, use it, I use it all the time. I love it. Yeah. Your, yours is more catchy than theirs, though. Yeah, I can't imagine a film doing well with that. Title. Yeah, the Anthropocene. <laughs> yeah, it's not so good. 
Sorry. Well, yeah, perhaps it, it should be. Uh, we should add that is to uh, Wikipedia when you when you look up Anthropocene. Yeah. You know, it's a, yeah, there's the definition: the age of stupid. Yeah, commonly known as the age of stupid. Climate scientists can estimate how much of the remaining fossil fuels we can safely burn. I love that part of the film because the, the graphic is, is is just great with the with the big big fat <laughs> guy walking along and he's shrinking and everybody else is coming up and all. I mean, People always find that quite uh, shocking. It's I think because it's just put so simply, yeah. it's essentially, it's like, oh right, okay, if we just did that, yeah. Like so many parts of, of the film, just just ab- absolutely brilliant. Uh, old old, oh, old Ralph exactly. Addison, right? There's a lot of magic there. <laughs> So do you think the paleontologists of the future, whether they are human or some other form, do you think they'll be looking back at this at the age of stupid or the Anthropocene and human humans we do wipe ourselves out? Or do you think we don't wipe ourselves out? We are at uh, carbon levels in the atmosphere now that we haven't seen since the Miocene 10, 15 million years ago. 15 million years ago, okay? Uh, and that's how extinction mass extinctions happen, you know, in huge amounts of times, and then all of a sudden, boom, and then huge amounts of times, and then something happens. Something happens, like the carbon in the atmosphere gets up to the level of, a, of something 15 million years, so something mm-hmm. happens, like, you know, a meteor, you know, the size of Texas hits the earth, or something happens, you know, volcanoes, you know, things like that, and, um, and if, if we don't think that we, as a species, are capable of making those kind of changes, then I just don't think we're being smart about it. If we are making those changes. Anthropocene is real, Age of Stupid is real, and those paleontologists in the future will be digging through all of the bones and all of the facts and all of the chemistry of the earth, pulling those clues together, and and whether there's a historical record of the word or the phrase or not, they will label it the age of stupid. Yeah. You did this, and you knew you were doing this. We are the most intelligent species that's ever lived, and yet at the same time, we're going to knowingly wipe ourselves out in all probability. So, are we the most intelligent species that's ever lived, or the most stupid? I don't know. That's the question. <laughs> yes, that is the yes. question. Yes. Which yes. one are we? The chicken or the egg? <laughs> are we the most intelligent or the most stupid? Yes. The answer is yes. We are both of those things. Of both. Well, we're trashing yeah. our only home, aren't we? We're trashing the life support system on which we depend. I mean, it's hard to think of anything more stupid than that. That's right. Okay. It's so good to see you, Al. We'll see see you in another 10 years. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) See you later. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.